Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and the new edition of our online interview series. Today, we want to talk to Amir Adnani, the CEO of Uranium Energy Corporation. And you know, uranium is hot. Uranium is really on the spot here. And the market has just started. Amir, good morning to Canada. How are you doing? Hi, Johan. I'm doing great. How are you? Nice to connect with you. It's been a while. Yeah, absolutely. Been a, li- been a while, too long, honestly, and uh, always nice to talk to you. Thanks for taking the time. That's why I thought it's really time for an update as the uranium market looked to me a little bit like, yeah, just on the jump. Yeah, we want to talk later on the markets, but first on your terrific company where I'm a shareholder of a company. I want to disclose this first. I'm a long-term shareholder and uh, I have a target for UEC in my point and figure chart of 12 US dollars. Just up front for you guys as you are watching the video and Amir smiles already because I'm sure he likes it. First of all, congratulations on your deal um, to become America's largest uranium producer in the future. Congratulations. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Our acquisition of Uranium One Americas, which completed just uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, not only is it a transformational and very accretive transaction for UEC, but it's actually, and I don't know if you knew this or not, it's the largest M&A transaction in the uranium sector in almost a decade by, certainly by a Western company. Uh, And uh, and I might even just be the whole world, but... It really is uh, an acquisition that not only did it um, serve UEC's uh, long-term interest extremely well, very strong uh, accretion from a standpoint of really doubling our production capabilities in a number of key categories, but with dilution that amounted to roughly 12 or 13 percent of our enterprise value. It was an all-cash deal, and so we were also able to uh, benefit from the very strong balance sheet that we developed last year to put it towards uh, a, a long-term competitive advantage for our company, which is to truly put ourselves in a position where we have more permitted projects. We have seven permitted projects now in Texas and Wyoming, two fully built processing plants. I really got to emphasize the word, the words fully built. Mm-hmm. Why? Because if you were to go out there today with crazy inflation in this world and try to build one of those processing plants, you'd be exposed to inflation risk. You'd be exposed to the issues around uh, large capex issues or, or projects right now. And the fact that we have acquired fully built projects and one of the mines that is in the Uranium One portfolio, Christensen Ranch, is also fully built, makes us uh, that much more shielded against uh, the inflationary concerns in the world. But the fact that it's also fully permitted means we're truly de-risked from the one attribute of uranium mines today, which is permits. I mean, if you don't have permits, it doesn't matter how high the uranium price goes. You can't mine. And I think it really shows this acquisition that uranium one, uh, the the acquisition of uranium one really shows that we have strong uh, intentions here. And our intentions really are demonstrated by the fact that we're putting our money where our mouth is. We believe in a much higher uranium price because of many of the macro points that you and I are going to talk about. But ultimately, again, uh, this is uh, uh, this is an acquisition that shows intent. It shows accretion to UEC on many levels, and it certainly makes us the largest uh, and the leading American uranium mining company. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Where do you see, let's say, or let, let's put it that way, what would be first your incentive price to restart the production? What would be then a combined production per annum? So now what you have is you have at Uranium Energy two hub and spoke strategies. For a long time, you've heard us talk about our South Texas hub and spoke strategy, which is anchored by the Hobson processing plant. Mm-hmm. And three surrounding projects that are fully permitted, all using the low-cost in-situ recovery method. Mm -hmm. Now we have a hub-and-spoke strategy in Wyoming. It's anchored by the very large and operating Erigiri processing plant and four uh, fully permitted uranium mines. And on top of that, over 100,000 acres of land in various properties and holdings and databases, the historic Measured and indicated resources are roughly 36 million pounds, another 4 million pounds in inferred. And then there's another 40 million pounds of historic. All these resources, we look to 
update and bring into compliance categories so that we can report under UEC's disclosure. But suffice to say, before this acquisition, we had approximately 100 million pounds of uranium in measured, indicated, and inferred. And with the acquisition, we nearly, well, by the time we publish all the new resource reports, should, should have doubled our total resource space to almost, a, to almost 200 million pounds of resources. And to come back to the question about um, pricing, the one benefit that UEC has uh, today, Johan, more than ever before, is we don't just have uranium in the ground. We have uranium in drum barrels as well. We've established one of the largest inventories of physical uh, uranium uh, starting last year, where we started buying physical uranium at $26, $27 per pound. Price today is $43 per pound. Not only did we buy for immediate delivery, we also locked in pricing with fixed dates of delivery and fixed pricing out over the next four years at an average cost for acquisition of $32 per pound. And so that gives us the ability to sell uranium even at today's $45 uranium price environment. Because if your average cost is $32 that you bought and you're selling at $44, $45, that's over a 30% return. That's really, that's really great for just having bought inventory and basically have that available in addition to your resources. So while we might be long 200 million pounds of uranium in the ground, it's really nice to also be long 4 million pounds of uranium in barrels and to mm -hmm. be contracted for that because there we don't have all the concerns around the production ramp up time mm -hmm. and uh, considerations around building up our human resource base for restarting production, all of which we're looking at now. And I think the biggest issue, Johan, facing the uranium mining industry today is really the issue around inflation. Inflation is uh, having a major impact on most mining projects all over the world, not just uranium. You know, for the longest time, the uranium industry has talked about $50 being the incentive level to restart production. Um, that was pre-COVID. Even if you adjust for inflation over the last couple of years, it really makes you wonder, Will Chemical restart MacArthur River at 50? Will most uranium mines that need billions of dollars of capex really build at 50? No. And so we'll see if that price is really the level that it makes the most sense to restart or not. I'll point out something interesting, that the all-time high uranium price of uh, $140 from 2007, mm -hmm. if you adjust that for inflation today, that's almost $200 a pound. And, and so the reality- So that's is a new I, price target? Well, I just think that I, I think the I think we we need perspective. I think we need perspective mm -hmm. because everyone in uranium uh, land is excited about the fact that the uranium price last year moved from twenty seven dollars to to well, maybe one as high as yeah, fifty dollars came back. Mm -hmm. But you know, this move from twenty seven to now around forty two, forty three dollars per pound is a roughly thirty five percent move. It made uranium one of the best performing commodities last year. And everyone gets excited about uranium. And I'm just saying that this is really nothing, guys. This is, this is not where the uranium price really needs to be in the long term mm -hmm. in order to incentivize lots of new uranium mines to come online, not just our projects. Our projects, the benefit of what we just acquired with the acquisition of Uranium One, Johan, is that we can be in production in four to five months. We mm -hmm. have the shortest path to production out of any uranium company on the planet because our processing plant is already built. Our mines are, our first mine in Wyoming, uh, Christensen Ranch is built. Four production units are built and permitted and ready mm -hmm. to go. It doesn't get more production ready than UEC. But the reality is the world needs more than our production. Our production profile today of what is only permitted, so not even talking about upside, mm -hmm. what is permitted mm -hmm. is six and a half million pounds per year. That's mm -hmm. our production profile of what is permitted but the world consumes uh, uh, the consumption of uranium globally is approaching 200 million pounds mm -hmm. per year. so while our six and a half million pounds is wonderful it makes us the largest and at full capacity we'd be the largest u.s uranium producer mm -hmm. it's simply not enough and more mines need to be built globally and i think for <laughs> that uranium prices i really think are going to be probably somewhere in the 90 to to $100 a pound range uh, before we start to see, you know, real development action. And then if you adjust mm -hmm. it for all-time high inflation, like I said, you're looking at $200 a pound. Mm -hmm.
Wow, that would you will see skyrocket for sure in the share price. Some others also, but uh, you guys have really done the benefit, as you said, six and a half million pounds combined uh, production. That is really a nice amount of uranium. So um, as we are talking already about the markets, so what has for you changed in the last, let's say, three, four years? I mean, we know all the themes, CO2 emissions, e-mobility, whatever. But I think this world needs much, much more power, right? And I think, uh, or my feeling is that a lot of the politicians and also the energy agencies have underestimated how much power we need, right? So uh, is this also something where you would say, hey, if we look at 2005 to 2007 uranium, okay, there was maybe more of on the financial side, the hype. What is the difference today? And when do you see that market really turning and starting? I think on the demand side, the really the big difference today versus let's say 2007 is that the two themes and the two mega trends of decarbonization and electrification, electric mobility, today are real and they're underpinned by huge amounts of government pledges towards net zero mm -hmm. or just the sheer pace at which every automaker on the planet is transitioning or moving towards building either hybrid or all electric vehicles. Something that even in 2007, Tesla as a, as a, as a barometer of where the electrification movements or trend was, Tesla was a three-year-old company in 2007. So today we're talking about a market where truly rec the, the recognition that we're gonna have more electric vehicles on the roads throughout the world and that these cars need to be recharged and they can't be recharged with just renewable that works 25% of the time, mm -hmm. but that they we need to have renewables alongside nuclear power that combination, as you know, is now being embraced uh, with even in Europe with the talk of including nuclear energy in the European taxonomy. The new commitments out of China to say that they're building 150 new reactors over the next 15 years. Mm -hmm. The United States pledging to go net zero. The EU, Japan pledging to go net zero. No one can achieve net zero in terms of carbon neutrality without nuclear power mm -hmm. in the next 15 to 25 years or, you know, out to 2050, which is the timeline that mm -hmm. most pledges are linked to. So the reality is that, again, these two mega trends of decarbonization and electrification today are, are simply powerful and, and impossible to refute. And they simply did not exist with the same structure in 2007. Finally, in 2007, I think the supply side of uranium was more advanced than it is today. In 2007, we had, uh, for example, uh, Cigar Lake, which famously flooded in 2007, mm -hmm. but they finally got that under control. It flooded because it was under construction. It was a major mm -hmm. new mine that was under construction in 2007, and it provided for a supply response when the uranium prices spiked. Today, there isn't another Cigar Lake under construction. There isn't a single major uranium deposit that could, let's say, provide 10% of global supply. Mm -hmm. Such a thing is not currently under construction. Such a deposit is not even fully permitted today. So mm -hmm. today, the supply side, I think, is much further behind to respond. And the respond time will be longer than what happened in 06, 07. And really, the other reality is that when, when we think about the attitude change, right, now with carbon being so topical and with the developments out of COP26 and the fact that nuclear energy was truly had a seat at the table at COP26, and I think it's going to have a bigger seat at the table at COP27, we no longer, you and I, don't need to travel throughout Europe driving around and trying to convince people why they should embrace nuclear power. It's happening on its own. And it's this realization that we got to reduce global temperatures. And again, this is the only solution with nuclear energy to get the global temperatures down, nuclear with renewables, is a perfect one-two punch. And uh, I think it's, a, it, it's an undeniably powerful combination and we're getting the recognition for it. Uranium prices, as you know, in the grand scheme of things, make up a very small percentage of the mm. operating cost than a nuclear reactor. And that's what's always drawn entrepreneurs like me to this industry and investors like you to this industry, that there is no cap on the uranium price. The uranium price 
ultimately has to get to where it needs to get to for steady supply to be available so that the reactors can keep running. And for new reactors, existing reactors, uranium is not the, the price you worry about when you build a nuclear reactor. Prices, mm -hmm. The price of uranium, again, is an insignificant percentage of overall costs to run a nuclear power plant. So you bring all that together, and I think it is the best setup that I've seen in my 18 years in the uranium mining industry. And you talk to people like Scott Melby, who's been in the uranium industry for 37 years, he would tell you there has never been a setup like this, as positive and as bullish as this today for uranium ever before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I see it the same way, definitely. Last but not least, I think we should touch on two little things. First of all, you are debt free. You have $120 million in cash. What you going to do this year with that cash? What is the work plan? What, what do you want to do? Yeah, just recently we announced that the company, we had $10 million of debt left under a credit facility uh, going back to almost six years ago. Uh, it was a difficult time in the uranium industry over the last six mm -hmm. years, but we persevered. We grew the company uh, and we had great backers that provided both equity and debt. And But it was a very important milestone to pay off the debt recently and to become debt free. Not too many uranium companies or mining companies in general that have production capability are debt free. And so not only to be debt free, but to have uh, approximately $125 million in cash and liquid assets uh, is fantastic. And so what that means is that we're uh, really in a, the strongest position we've ever been in as from a balance sheet point of view with assets that, as, that, as I mentioned, are built and ready to go. This year with the cash that we have, not certainly not all of it, you know, we, like I mentioned, we have over $125 million of available cash and liquidity our planned expenditures just for the next 12 months, uh, maybe around $15 million. Okay. So it's not like, like we've got ample runway here and ample room to, to go out there. And the first thing we're going to do is really with the Uranium One acquisition, as I mentioned, there's many resources that are currently classified as historic that we want to convert into uh, compliant and report under uh, our disclosure uh, requirements for mineral resources. Mm -hmm. moving forward. We are, looking at integrating our Reno Creek project. Reno Creek is a project we owned already in Wyoming, in the Powder River Basin. It's only 45 miles away from the Arigiri processing plant, which was part of our acquisition of Uranium One. And so now we have a major capital uh, savings that we can realize, and we're planning how best not to build a processing plant at Reno Creek, mm -hmm. and instead realize these very deep and uh, operating and cost-saving synergies would bring in Reno Creek, which is a large 26 million pound measured and indicated fully permitted institute recovery resource, the biggest in the United States that's fully permitted and integrate that into the new Wyoming hub and spoke strategy with the combination of the uranium one assets. That's going to be very exciting. And, uh, and, and look, the company uh, could exit this fiscal year ending July 31st also potentially uh, with revenues. The physical uranium program that we initiated was established really with three reasons in mind. We always felt that it was a good business idea to buy mm -hmm. physical uranium below what the global mining cost was for most producers at $32 per pound. That was even before inflation took off the way that it kicked it. Yeah. Last. Okay, so adjusting for inflation, that would be even higher today. But luckily, we came in, we bought our physical uranium, secured prices before this massive move in inflation. So we're locked in at $32 per pound. It's a balance sheet asset for us. But we always said it can also help accelerate our revenue generation because we can sell from inventory sooner before restarting mines. And as you mm -hmm. start to accelerate revenue cash flow with your inventory, you then pick up uh, for longer term revenue and cash flow growth with your production. And this is very much the theme in uranium mining. In uranium mining, you see the bigger companies, the Cameco's, the Kazadam Proms, not only, in fact, I think in the case of Cameco, almost two thirds of their revenue these days comes from buying and selling uranium rather mm -hmm. than mining uranium. And so this is, this is an interesting feature in the uranium industry because again, of the fact that there have been historically inventories available in the market, which are shrinking and getting a lot smaller now. But suffice to say, you're going to see uranium energy as 
a very different company today moving forward. This is a company that moving forward is the leading American uranium mining company. It is a debt-free company. It's got the strongest balance sheet in it in our own history, but also in the sector with the 125 million of cash and liquid assets. We do not have billions of dollars of unfunded capital expenditure uh -huh. of us because we're focused on institute recovery and our first mine, Christensen Ranch, and its four, first four production units and the processing plant it's going to go to are built. I repeat, already built. <laughs> and, and so we're also in a position to really uh, take advantage of the inventory that we acquired, which not you know, the only other companies that really have that size of inventory we have would be the big majors. And so you really could then start to accelerate and create revenue and cash flow sooner. And Johan, you know, after 17, 18 years of, uh, of being at the helm of this company, having founded this company, it's truly exciting and I think rewarding for our shareholders that have supported the story for a, through a difficult uh, winter for nuclear energy, uh, which was the decade following 2011, where we've really grown the size of our company, right? As you know, UEC in the last decade has quadrupled. And now with the Uranium One acquisition, even beyond that, we've, we've really increased the size of our platform by okay. that when the Uranium prices were low, the best thing you could have done was buy more Uranium assets, mm -hmm. buy physical Uranium, believe in the thesis, put your money where your mouth is, assemble a very, very big platform, bigger than in the previous bull markets, and sit tight because if you believe the thesis, which we do and we've always done, and you have, you know that eventually it was not an if, but when that we yep. see the turn in Uranium price. We saw the first leg up last year. $42 is nothing, in my opinion. We got way, way much higher levels to go before uh, this truly becomes a bull market for uranium. And again, it's not an if, it's a when. Uh, mm -hmm. And it will, uh, it will be in the cards here uh, in, in the coming months and years. Super. Perfect. Amir, thank you very much for the update and uh, very helpful and useful insight as always. I think looks look things look really terrific. You are doing the right stuff and uh, as you described in the last 22 minutes. And yeah, thanks for the updates. All the best and talk to you soon. Thank you, Johan. You as well. Take Thank care. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Amir Nani, the CEO of Uranium Energy Corporation. And you heard it. When they can, when they restart the production incentive price, maybe 50, 50, 55 dollars, we will see. But six and a half million pounds annual uranium production should be possible through the acquisition of uranium one. UEC will be then or is now the largest uranium producer in the US. So that is a fantastic feature and nice to have. And as Amir pointed out, everything is there. Everything is permitted. They do not need capital. They can restart at their choice the production and that very fast. And this makes this company so special. And what we love, no debt and $125 million in cash and market capital uh, securities and a lot physical uranium also to play with. So I would suggest you check out the company because that stock price is way too cheap. And as I said in the beginning of this interview, my first price target is 12 US dollars for this company. And as Ami alluded, if this yeah, uranium price goes to 100, maybe $200. We will see what happened. We all sold our crystal ball last week. That's also for sure. Nobody can predict this. But it looks like a uranium Super Bowl market is right around the corner. And this is how to benefit. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.